Hey everybody, it's David. Um, it is Sunday, November the 20th, and I just uh, wanted to come on here like I do every weekend and give you a, a quick update. Um, I only have two more days this week of this first round of treatment, and I'm so thankful for that part of this uh, journey to, to end. Um, and then uh, beginning of December is when I will start the mainline chemo. And uh, we're just believing that this is going to, uh, that God's going to use this um, and just dissolve it. And uh, we're, it's going to be, it's going to be good. Um, Thanksgiving is this just a few days away. And, um, you know, if you would have told me just three months ago that, hey, you're going to be ending 2022, um, around Thanksgiving time, you're going to be in the middle of treatment for this illness that you have. Um, you're going to be told you can't work anymore. Um, and yet, somehow, you're going to be more thankful than you've ever been in your life. I would have thought you're crazy. Uh, but that's exactly where I'm at right now. And um, I can't... You know, I used to think that I was thankful. For, for those things and uh, that that you know almost were just lip service your your thankfulness but um, boy has that ever changed I am I am more grateful for every day that I wake up and feel good and am able to uh, to do what I'm I'm able to do um, it is it's now I mean you just um, you take so much for granted and um, here we are. And I'm so thankful to have you guys praying for me, standing and believing with me. Um, if you're watching this, uh, I want to let you know how thankful we are, my family and I are for you. Um, I, I told you from the start that I'm going to take you on this journey of healing, uh, a journey to healing with me. And I'm amazed at how many of you are hanging on and joining in with us. And, um, and, and standing with us and praying for us. Um, uh, for those of you who have given so sacrificially and, and uh, uh, again, uh, you have made the impossible and you are making the impossible possible. Um, God is using you to help help get us through this, uh, this time. And um, so, so thankful for you guys. We, we pray for you every day. Um, uh, I had somebody tell me that they're even, since I started doing these video updates, that um, uh, people are even studying the scripture that I give them uh, through these videos, and they're they're actually you know using that to to teach classes and for personal Bible studies, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, I shared something the other day. Uh, I was scrolling through Facebook, which I uh, do when I'm when I'm bored, and um, I saw this advertisement, I don't even know what state or city or, or this church was in, but they were advertising that they were going to have a healing service. And I noticed that that, there was nothing, you know, crazy looking about the ad or, you know, um, and I noticed it had a lot of comments. So I just kind of started scrolling through those comments and I had never seen such hatred uh, from church people uh, talking about what a a fraudulent thing this is to have a healing service and how it's it's heresy and uh, and it broke my heart really because um, I think that in the last 30 40 years um, you know that caricature of a faith healer is a shiny suit you know 10 gold rings and um, uh, just really phony baloney stuff and and I think that that the enemy has used that stereotype to one teach us to to, to keep us from teaching on faith, and two on teaching on healing because there's so much in Scripture about that. And I thought, what a shame for a church to be ridiculed like this for having a service dedicated to healing. And um, I, I just thought it was really sad. Um, some of the most hateful comments that I had ever seen. Um, so, I want you to, as you as you go into this Thanksgiving season, and I'm not going to do a long 
devotional with a six point plan or anything like that. Um, I want you to really ask yourself because um, you may be in that in that group of people that are critical of, of uh, a church that would uh, have a healing service or uh, teach on the subject of healing and how to build your faith and and things like that because of that stereotype of, uh, of image that we have when it comes to healing and faith. Um, but I want to ask you something because I've, I've actually, I've actually had, you know, some people through this journey that are, are very genuine church, you know, good people uh, and they're, they're good church going people. Um, but it's almost like they want to prepare me, uh, for, if this faith that I speak of doesn't work, and um, and I smile and I go on and I and I tell them what I know, and this is what I know Scripture says, and I, this is what I know, and this is why I'm basing my assurance on the outcome of this on His Word because He never takes His Word back, He never changes His Word, and um, that remains the same. So if He did it then, He'll do it. Today, he'll do it tomorrow. Uh, and we're just believing for that. But let me ask you this, because sometimes when you think about the idea, which is what we're praying for, is that God could miraculously and will miraculously take a small tumor and dissolve it out of my body. And I have people, you, you know, like I said, they almost gasp because they're so afraid that faith will not work. So this is what I, I want to ask you. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, if you know me and you're following me, most of you would say, Dave, I have put my trust in Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross and, for my sin, and um, I choose to believe in Jesus, and I've made him my choice. I mean, I, I want to ask you this because when you say, I believe in Jesus, a lot of times I don't think we really think about what that means and on what level we must believe that. And so for it, these are just Christianity 101 in my book. But in order to, be, to believe and follow Christ, let's just take Genesis, the first book of the Bible that God was able to speak and things that were not became as they were. And when he spoke it, it happened. That's pretty amazing. Um, and there are a lot of people in church that don't believe that. Um, because they've bought into other crazy philosophies that the Bible would warn us about uh, not to buy into. But I want you to think about this. What is the likelihood of a virgin uh, becoming pregnant? That's pretty impossible. But that's exactly, when you say you believe in Jesus, that's exactly what you're saying you believed happened. And in his, um, not just that, but Im imagine this, raising Jesus... Um, from childhood through his teenage years, and he never did anything wrong. He never sinned against his parents. He never sinned against God. Um, as a human, that seems pretty impossible. But when I say I believe in Jesus, that's the part. That's another part of Jesus I have to believe in. And then when he started his ministry, everything, all the miracles, the the that he performed, the, the people that he raised from the dead. Um, do you really believe that that happened? Because that was the impossible becoming possible. But that's part of Jesus that you must accept when you say you accept Jesus. And then there's his death. Um, wow, I mean, just so much to cover. His death, his burial... And finally, on the third day, his resurrection, uh, that he came out of that grave victorious and what that means for us. So when we say we believe in Jesus, 
those are the crazy things that we believe. And they sound crazy to someone who does not believe. But to a believer, it sounds like exactly what God would do. So when I tell you that we are believing and know that God is going to take this small tumor and dissolve it, well, I'll just ask you the way God asks us. Is there anything too hard for God? So when you think about, uh, I'm a Christian, or I have said yes to Jesus, and I, and I believe in Jesus, do you believe those things about Jesus? Because you you can't pick and choose. I mean, it's you're either you really accept him and all that is him, or you don't. And then here's the crazy thing. Jesus said as he ascended, I'm coming back. That's another part of Jesus that you have to believe if you're going to follow Jesus, if you're really going to believe in Jesus. Those things are not just historical accounts. Those are a living God that is still God today as he was then. And he will be, when he returns, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. So when you say, I believe in Jesus, make sure that you really believe in Jesus. Um, and so when I say that I have faith that will move this tumor that is much smaller than a physical mountain, um, I am assured that he not only can do it, but that he will do it. Guys, I'm so thankful. My family, we're so thankful for you, for your support, uh, all that you've done for our family and, and for praying for, for us and praying for me. Um, Tawana has a birthday this week, and uh, so we're going to be celebrating that hopefully a little bit. Her mom's in town right now, and uh, so thankful for that. But um, just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, I am, uh, like I said, two more days of this treatment, and uh, that'll be past me, and then we, we move on to phase two at the beginning of December. So um, still believing for no side effects and um, that uh, God is going to give me supernatural strength through this to, uh, to carry on. So um, thank you. We love you. God bless you.